So good morning, sir, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, and MS Teams. And I welcome you all to today's eminent scientist lecture under CSIR SRTP program. So this SRTP program was started with a whole idea to provide a platform to the students who are stuck at home, especially during these unprecedented times when the whole world is fighting against COVID-19 pandemic. So, and this morning we are very fortunate to have Padma Shri, Dr. Vishweshwaraya Prakash, who is a stalwart of CSR family and more than that, a respected, renowned and a celebrated scientist of national and international repute. So on behalf of my director, Dr. G. Narahari Sastri and my entire SRTP team at CSR NIS, I extend my special wel welcome to you, sir. And thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to listen from you today. So we would like to begin this uh, session. So uh, now I request my director, Dr. G. Narahari Sastri, to say a few welcome remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ilika. Good morning, Padmasri Professor Prakash, and it's always a pleasure to interact with him. And during the periods of COVID, we have a number of issues. And one of the most important issue is very bright students are locked in their home. And today, all of you are fortunate to hear from Professor Prakash that this is also a good time for us to reflect upon ourselves that what is that we can do in our life. And probably we have to understand what is our tradition, which includes various habits like food, nutrition, which will lead to immunity. And the whole world knows that immunomodulation is the only way to fight COVID-19. So I hope that all of you will learn how following the traditions and using optimal food and nutrition will help you to have immunity. And it's very nice that somebody like Professor Prakash, who is one of the world renowned scientists, who is a Bhatnagar awardee and the government of India bestowed Padma Shri and highest award in Karnataka, Karnataka Rajyotso awardee. And more importantly, he has more than 65 national and international recognitions and he's extremely busy in trying to evaluate the food and nutrition and all elite sectors with the highest possible science. And he always keeps himself updated with the most modern methods that are there. And he is a truly international person and he is not only chairing many, many bodies in India, but also abroad. So his vision is very, very broad. On behalf of all of you, I really thank Professor Prakash for taking his time and then came here to talk to you and then please listen to him. And he actually needs no introduction, but for the benefit of people, uh, maybe some formal introduction will be done by uh, a young person. Iliga will choose somebody to introduce him. And on behalf of all of you, I am really honored and delighted to have Professor Prakash. And sir, now our number of uh, students in the MS teams crossed 500 and uh, 506, and it is going at a much higher rate and then Facebook and YouTube are also in very big number and a few thousands are already online and uh, I on behalf of all of them really thank you from bottom of our heart for taking your time and then we look forward to your lecture. Thank you very much. Thank Over you. Over to you, Ilika. Shastri. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. So before I request uh, our speaker, Dr. V. Prakash, to deliver his lecture, I request uh, my colleague, Ms. Monty Gogoi, to briefly introduce our speaker. Thank you so much, ma'am. 
I feel honored to introduce such a distinguished personality who is both nationally and internationally acclaimed. Sir is one of the most eminent personalities from CSI family. Dr. Vishveshwaraya Prakash is currently the Vice President of International Union of Nutritional Sciences, Honorable President of the International Society of Nutraceuticals and Nutritionals and Naturals India, Honorable Chairman, India Region of European Hygienic Energy Engineering Design Group, Germany. He is primarily responsible for establishing nutraceuticals and nutritional research center at Ramaya University. He was former director of CFTRI, Mysore, and was appointed as distinguished scientist of CSIR India. He has received more than 65 national and international awards, including one of the high civilian awards, Padmashri, coveted Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award, for Science and Technology and Rajyotsava Award and several Lifetime Achievement Awards from various Indian organizations and also from abroad. He is currently serving in the editorial board of a number of food, science and technology, nutrition and nutraceutical journals and is the editorial board of a number of books published worldwide for Elsevier and John Billy. He is also the board member of IUFOST, his former chair of panel on nutraceuticals and member scientific committee of SSAI, Government of India, New Delhi. He is a fellow of most of the academies in India and Royal Society of Chemistry, UK, IUFOST, Canada and IFT, USA. Dr. Prakash's scientific contribution is in the area of food science and technology, chemistry and biochemistry of foods, nutrition, biotechnology, food safety, nutraceuticals and so on. Dr. Prakash has a as of date, 214 peer-reviewed research publications, 55 patents filed, nearly 50 PhD degrees guided, and 804 plus keynote chief guest and convocation addresses delivered, and is an author of 14 books, and 12 more books are in pipeline. His keen interest in societal endeavors of nutrition reach out and regulatory angle of startups is known very well for many in policy circles. As a regular contributor to various professional leading journals and magazines and being media savvy person reaches out to the public to the message of science for a healthy lifestyle. He is a regular evaluator of projects globally for various countries funded by World Bank and EU and responsible for many planning documents for India. He continues to strive hard for innovative solutions of minimizing food losses and waste, minimizing undernutrition, reducing poverty and hunger globally, and more so nationally in nutritional programs inclusive of child and maternal malnutrition endeavors. He does these with an integrated approach with sustainable solutions and also focusing the affordability of such processes. His contribution and promotion of traditional foods and herbal based approaches at different levels of ground realities to policy matters has earned him a global place in the subject of health and wellness. Thank you very much, Ms. Monty. Sir, I would like to request you now to uh, start your lecture. Over to you, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning to all of you around India, around the world and around the spectrum of academia. And it's a great opportunity for me to be here today morning. And uh, thank you very much for that uh, good words about me, Professor Narahari Shastri, Ms. Monty and uh, Ms. Saha. First of all, let me in welcoming all the students from various sections of bachelor's degree, master's degree, and uh, PhD, postdoc, young faculty and experienced faculty, BTEC, MTEC, and so on, even engineering students. Let me put on the card my grateful thanks to Dr. Shekhar Mande, Director General of CSIR India which is a leading organization in the world, as you know, to think of this very innovative way of reaching the student and young population through the summer research training program. I'm grateful to you, Dr. Mande. It is very important to think very not innovatively in a place where today the youngsters 
need more and more knowledge so that they can make the right decision. I also would like to go on record thanking Professor Narahari Shastri, director of NIEST, which is a constituent laboratory of CSIR at Jorhat, and the huge amount of tasks that he and his team have undertaken is, is amazingly large. And I appreciate the deep interest, the young innovative way of doing things to reach out in this situation of a global pandemic. But still, I would also say uh, at this point of time, I hear close to a thousand people are online almost and they're joining more and more. Thanks to all of you for to be with us today for this summer research training program. I would like to say in the beginning that this is more a training program today for me as much as you. Because in the discussion part, I would like to learn more about what you have to say and what I need to learn more. Throughout our life, we need to be students. And very rarely that we can remove that coat of student and say, I know everything. No. So therefore, this is a mutual learning process. And this platform created by CSR will go in the annals of uh, tradition, annals of the entire history of science going to students and science going also in a large way through YouTube, through Facebook and many other ways to even to people who are interested in science. And I think that is the reach out that CSR has given and it's a wonderful idea. The topic of today, as you know, is food, nutrition, tradition, and immunity uh, in the larger context of COVID-19. Due to paucity of time, I'm not going to spend too much time on what is COVID, what is coronavirus, etc., because that really all of you know very well. <clears throat> but what is needed today is to understand the role of food in the body, nutrition in the body, tradition which has brought us to this day in terms of food. And therefore, it is vital for us to understand this from an integrated approach with a high science-based platform. It is very, very important to emphasize that. That's because today, when we really look at the large way in which we are in this society, the entire agri-food business chain is starting from good agricultural practices, thanks to the uh, farmer, without whom we cannot really be growing our own food. Somebody else is growing and we are eating. We are grateful to him. And at the same time, we are grateful to the other end for the armed forces who protect our border. So between these two people, the farmer and the soldier, we are somewhere in between enjoying the rather luxuries of society, including food being not grown by us, but at the same time, our borders are protected. What we can do today to understand food, nutrition and tradition in the context of the pandemic. When we look at agricultural practices, harvesting practices, transport practices, and also training, retraining, and even certain regulatory mechanisms, <clears throat> we come into the point of all are interlinked. So the entire point number one, the entire agri-food business chain is interlinked, not excluding even the industry, because without industry, you can't have products. So therefore, let, let us be very clear. The chain is from farm to fork. F-O-L-K is my definition, not F-O-R-K. Because fork does include all levels of people, all who can afford, who cannot afford, and so on. So the first thing is the entire agri-food business chain is interlinked. And any one link is weak, then the whole link is completely gone. We are sometimes scared of our population. The world has scared us that by 2050, 
uh, the developing world will have 10 billion population and the so-called uh, the high income group countries will have about 1.2 billion population. So the low income countries and the developing countries will have a big problem with population is what is scares us, what the statistics scares us. But I have a different opinion. We are really bestowed with a human resource rich world. India today is the richest in youngsters and therefore this human resource rich world is not a liability but it is an asset. So that's the point number two I want to drive home. So we are sitting in a country which are the assets of human beings and we need to really tap, explore all the potential that this population has, both from the end of farmer all the way to the border. And in doing so, today India has moved from a, a surviving market to a mass market to almost a convenience and a quality and hygienic product market in the area of food and related uh, you know, products. So therefore, we were at one time surviving market on consumption, but today the availability is plenty. We are self-sufficient in food and food quality and the entire chain is very well done. Even in COVID pandemic and lockdown, food reached almost all the places into all corners and there was no pandemic on the shortage of food. So therefore, this country has that value in it in terms of the chain. Therefore, when we look at economic development, we also look at the symbiosis of food with diet, health, wellness and nutrition. And these are inseparable. I can't separate food and nutrition. I cannot separate nutrition and health and I cannot separate health and wellness. But however, it is also important to remember in the human body, we have a, a gut which is loaded with large number of trillions and trillions of microbes, which are, which are really so good, which drives our almost life. And today our understanding of that into life in gut apparently plays a very major role. Therefore, when we look at nutritionals, when we look at nutraceuticals, and when we look at food and diet, it is not a one day affair like a vaccine. The nutrition is throughout life affair and is vital for a sustainable health on a daily basis. Please remember that. If you don't have nutrition for one day, perhaps something else happens in the body. And that is a very complex situation one uh, comes across. In doing so, when we look at food from seed to seed and the various foods that we grow like grains, fruits and vegetables, meat, fish and poultry, spices and condiments for which India is well known, and some of the tree nuts, some of the other nuts, all become a, a very big bowl and basket of nutrition. But some are known for certain properties. Some are absolutely required for existence. So it is here I want to mention that if we today neglect the food and nutrition angle, we will end up with a problem of one nutrient deficiency, even one, and that can cause the ill health because the balance in the body is completely lost. So when we look at such a complex phenomena and on that, like the body has about a, a million molecules floating around every, body, every day when we take food and digest and other molecules which are circulating. It's a huge, huge setup. And most of them are not controlled by us, by our willpower or mind power. It goes automatically. So also the immune system, when we come to that as point number four, we know that the immune system is spread all around the body in cells, organs, proteins, tissues. 
And crucially, the immune system can distinguish our tissue from the foreign tissue, self and non-self. It also has a large number of other molecules in the chain. It is very difficult to summarize the entire spectrum of immunity and the immune system. But to know that white blood cells, which are patrolling for pathogens, all the way to the, uh, you know, stored in lymphoid organs of some of the thymus glands, spleen, bone marrow, lymph nodes, and we have like leukocytes, uh, both phago and lymphocyte, and the B cells and the T cells. The B cells produce antibodies, which you all heard of, and alert the T cells, and the T cells compromisingly destroy the cells in the body that are foreign to us and help alert others. Hey, here is a foreigner. Take care of him. He's not good. So the body gets alert. And lastly, the entire antigen antibody spectrum and the immunoglobulins, as well as the T lymphocytes, both the alpha T cells and the killer T cells, all works together. And the spectrum of a child, of an adult, and an agent for immunity is quite different. Therefore, with this background of immunity, the immune system is incredibly complicated and utterly vital for our survival. Several different systems and cell types work in perfect synchrony and harmony, like an orchestra, what we hear in music, throughout the body 24 by seven to fight against pathogens and clean the entire body from time to time and make sure the dead cells are also removed and are not accumulated. So what a complex system God has created and how much we know about it, the more we don't know about it, the more perplexed we are, how complex it is. And research is going on today in a very, very different fashion to understand at the basic level. Therefore, when we come to food now, the intake of food is very important. And I'm, I'm kind of a little bit oversimplifying, but I'll come to the technology aspect later on. But today, when we look at what food to eat, uh, more than 150 nutrients come from food. Most of us think it is only protein, carbohydrate, and fat, and maybe fiber, and ash, maybe minerals, and so on. No, there are 150 plus nutrients coming from food. Of course, there are 13 essential vitamins and 16 essential minerals, and all these are spread around, and each one of them is important for immune function. And therefore, any shortcoming of any one of them is the weakest link in the chain and can affect many things in the body. To consume certain foods rich, today, like vitamin C, vitamin D, beta carotene, vitamin A, zinc, vitamin E, vitamin B12 and iron is not easy because sometimes we don't know what is the source of this food in which we can do. But these are quite available in many other websites, not only in India, but worldwide. And one has to now download this system and how they can affect the immunomodulatory system, some several mechanisms. For example, green leafy vegetables. Even for India, uh, what we what we really uh, look at uh, moong dal, which is supposed to boost immunity. There's not much research, but more research is on. But it is a cause and effect that is what is known and not a blind science. So therefore, it is vital for us to look at these foods, which not only came just in one day, but please remember, some of these are practices from 5,000 years, which are documented 2,000 years in Charaka Samhita and Shushruta Samhita, Ahar Adhikaranam, Bojana Kutuvalam, etc., which are documented. So therefore, when we look at chemistry of wellness, what we understand is by epidemiological evidence, there are certain foods which are categorized as healthy, and there are certain other foods which are less healthy but needed for the body's survival because the body's basic reason to take food inside it is only one, to convert that into energy and make the cells live and make the cells move forward. Therefore, 
one looks when one looks at food not only as a bodybuilder as a body energy provider and also treating the millions of gut microbes with what they want because they are the ones who protect us from many other systems which actually we are not fully aware so when we look at uh, nutrition nutraceuticals and traditionally well known foods which are documented both by the herbal systems all around the globe and the modern medicine most of them have emanated from plants by some of them when we go into reverse epidemiology and reverse pharmacology as my close friend dr ashok vaidya always says it is important that we address these from the point of cancer biology biomarker discoveries infections and immune systems which is today very relevant the role of peptides and proteins in therapeutics and diagnostics and also biomaterials and nanotechnology in delivery of certain drugs and in time release of certain molecules and in therapeutics further nutritional therapies for wellness and non communicable diseases such as cardiac diseases blood pressure diabetes etc which are non communicable in other words you don't have to wear mask if somebody has a diabetes so it is built into his system or her system by certain genetic situations or by a, a system where due to wrong lifestyle certain systems get affected and results in some of those diseases so that we call it ncds non communicable diseases and this will be topped up in day to day affair and day to day eating habits on the traditional and indigenous food and medicine system of india uh, which is very important on a scientific support to it for immune therapy on many angles as i said still research is ongoing research shall be ongoing there is no nothing like this the last day for that topic it keeps on going so when we look at synthetic matrices synthetic peptides interleukins therapeutic proteins and development of even cancer vaccines which has been possible in some area biosimilars and nature mimicking molecules for immunity boosting has been the order of day therefore all these are knowledge driven innovations and these can be tapped quickly regrouped and integrated as we come across certain challenges and today we are in the challenge of covid-19 to boost immunity till the vaccine arrives we have uh, several responsibilities for ourselves because of the nature of vaccine itself takes time it is not something that you can deliver tomorrow it has to undergo several phases so till it comes what will you do do you have anything to prevent uh, the infection not only covid because there are other things like uh, some of the diseases or comorbidity factors we are also protect ourselves from it using these real valued tradition science nutrition nutraceuticals and herbals for probiotic boosting and prebiotic microbiome boosting using biomarkers and integrate with bio bioinformatics and big data and uh, also which is close to heart of professor narahari shastri as in terms of artificial intelligence and realigning ourselves with the database of how to use that for bettering the health of course the knowledge of stem cells and systems biology today has no boundaries it is so so rich in knowledge that we can really contribute a large amount of information for bettering research the war inside us for better health continues it will never stop just because covid-19 has reduced or gone away but there are other pathogens other infections that are equally and equally and more important sometimes depending upon the age depending upon the immunity level and depending upon the comorbidity factors so therefore today 
when we look at uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, multiple myeloma and leishmania, a lot of drugs have come out by very indigenous, innovative and extraordinarily high sign in with less expenditure in laboratories, which really are emanating, especially from India. Uh, and we are very proud of them. And that happens because there is a concerted, concentrated and also continuous research that is going on in this area. It doesn't happen just because COVID came and we have suddenly started doing it. No, I would like to give the example of the whole vaccine research in India. Not one lab, but several labs are doing together. And this is where CSR makes a lot of difference in terms of networking such laboratories and making sure that we deliver what is needed by the society and by the medical profession. Traditional and indigenous food and medicine, wisdom and practices cannot be sidelined and cannot be set aside. And it is not necessary that everything has to have a scientific proof. Sometimes a small scientific support is all what is needed. For example, if I say the rice that you are eating or the wheat that you are eating has to be scientifically proved that it is safe for you, what will be your reaction? you will laugh at it. That's because the epidemiology has shown that out of 3000 varieties of rice, a large number of them cannot be grown in all weathers, in all soils. Therefore, each region has a rice variety based on the climate, based on the soil and based on the nature of water. And it has been shown over thousands of years, it is pretty safe, but overconsumption of it and at the same time doing something different and adding value to it by processing, all that will change the probiotic and prebiotic content of rice carbohydrates in a way, and that can change the properties. Therefore, when we look at preventive aspects of food, which is another way to look at such as spices like turmeric and also other spices that are widely used, including colored fruits like papaya, banana, citrus fruits, green leafy vegetable. I think it is important for us to realize that these really makes a big difference, even though they are given in small quantities, but a huge networking happens between the immune systems and these molecules on a food based approach. However, a, a very, very serious patient a, a patient who is admitted to ICU, a patient who is really suffering from other diseases, may not be able to eat all by food based approach, though he requires clinical intervention of capsules, caplets, tablets, syrup, intravenous and many other things. So that's set apart, which is a medical profession expertise to do that. But a normal person, a normal human being who can really take care of himself, with an appropriate cocktailing of the food that is suitable to his body or her body and standardize that, then we are really helping the body in boosting its own immunity, not only by doing the right eating habits, but let me tell you, without exercise, whatever you eat doesn't get converted to many molecules which are desired. So exercise and strengthening the lungs is very important and it is the lungs that drives the oxygen to the body. And the more you take oxygen inside, the more oxidative processes start happening in a different way. Therefore, when, when one looks at many, many drugs which are used for certain diseases, which reverses terminal patients many a time, food and drug for one disease, sometimes turning it out to be preventive or maybe even curative for other diseases. We have seen this in COVID in many areas. But a simple example like aspirin for headache is now more aspirin for a blood thinner, anti-TB drugs and amyloids and so on becomes very important. Therefore, all this has to be really looked at from an integrated approach. And especially uh, when we look at cognitive diseases and also 
the diseases that arises out of aging system of the body has to be really taken care because the immune system both at the very young age as a child which is much more given to the body not by eating food but by like an innate one like skin mucus uh, you know membrane gut etc and also an adaptable acquired one and at the same time getting immunity from mother's milk is all dependent and those days will be gone after the child starts growing so how do we really work in this theme of enhancing nutrition enhancing the health of the body by creating an environment for the immune system to act at its optimal level within the framework of food based approach and at the same time enough exercise depending upon the age and uh, relative system to make sure the body muscles are not sacrificed during the lockdown and one doesn't lose weight and rather also not become obese because of lack of exercise all this has to be put properly into a good perspective and in doing so what is our challenge for future the future food for changing lifestyle is going to change the new normal is not yet defined but will be defined shortly of how the new normal is people become more hygiene oriented people want food safety people demand a much more variety of foods which can boost their immunity on a permanent basis not necessarily only for covid so there has been there has been a challenge now to make people aware and each one of you my dear students and young faculty and experienced faculty please always with your knowledge spread it as much as you can by talking to people of course today you have to speak with the mask on and uh, in my studio here uh, i i strongly feel the more i look at it the more to talk but however professor shatri has told me that a good 20 minutes to 30 minutes is good enough and then we have a long discussion so in winding up the process of this talk <coughs> i would say excuse me the future food for changing lifestyle and a healthy product through wisdom traditional wisdom and practice that is very very important and also the traditional ethnic foods all are process and product based therefore the wisdom of food and biology latest biology intervention to understand it and the amount of biochemicals and the amount of phytochemicals that are available in herbs spices condiments and the gut microbiome a huge population of armed forces in our gut plus of course due diligence to exercise and good amount of oxygen going into lung is probably very important but in this situation we also have to remember that it is not necessary that always everything can come from food only for example there are certain advisories that happen vitamin d from sunlight is something that is forgotten almost everybody would like to pop up a pill of vitamin d3 and therefore i'm i'm done for vitamin d3 but the one that is exposed to sun in the morning sunlight for about 20 minutes is something which is missing in today's world because people are so busy from home to college home to institution in their own closed vehicle in their own closed helmet and uh, everywhere it is skin is protected because nobody want to be tanned thereby the wonderful sunlight which nature gives free of cost is not utilized for synthesizing one vitamin which is vitamin d and in this process even though the knowledge is not complete what are the other molecules that are synthesized in the body by the time sunlight gets converted to vitamin d it is not that sunlight goes into the skin and here comes out vitamin d no there are a lot of intermediaries and the role of these intermediaries we don't know yet many are still to be uh, experimented many are still to be understood so therefore when we look at all this 
the advisories such as early morning sunlight exposure, good exercise, and enough sleep and rest. That's when the immune system is maximally working. And please don't miss it. And also to make sure that the age and medical condition is given due importance and also calming the mind to certain deep breathing exercises to strengthen the lungs and as much as possible to have a factor in the new lifestyle or the new normal of sufficient hydration to be taken throughout the day and at the same time good eat eating habits and as much as possible healthy eating habits are vital. This is also important because from a food based approach there is a sustainability and a food based approach also comes into a system where one can standardize their personal foods which works for them. A food that may work for one may not work for the other because the whole gut system is different, the microbiome is different, the genetic you know, makeup of one person is completely different from the other. So therefore you might have to standardize your own personal food menu, may not be every day, but once in a week I need to take, these are the important things that I have to take and uh, this is very important to standardize. Many of us don't do it till we are sick. We take it for granted that all foods we can eat and doesn't matter, but that's fine. But there are some minimal number of foods and the nature of food that one has to take inside the body and otherwise it becomes very difficult for the body to combat. And body cannot go in market, body cannot go and buy a vegetable or a fruit. You have to buy and make it uh, available to it. Otherwise it will act upon the body itself and sometimes such things have happened where the immune system fails to recognize the self and the invader and tries to eat the body itself. On the last facet of this talk, the biodiversity that we see in nature and the entire biodiversity has to be used, not exploited <clears throat> unlimitedly, but used for a healthy lifestyle from a system which is quite uh, organized rather than disorganized. And also here, the concept of physical activity should never be forgotten. And at the same time, the mental exercise that is needed. However old you are, however locked down you are, physical activity and mental activity is very, very vital. This is not only during COVID pandemic time, throughout your life, throughout your life. And suddenly we have realized we have to wash our hands. What happened earlier days? We are not washing our hands? Yes. So you had a large number of these things working. And please don't forget that the body is invaded with hundreds of pathogens every day. And it's always alert like our army in the borders, 24 by 7. And thereby much more, you know, immune factors are being generated to protect you unknowingly from an infection which you got, which you didn't know. So therefore, it is not just COVID. It is the entire spectrum of pathogens. It is the entire spectrum of fungi, pollen, and so on and so forth, and including viruses, of course. These have to be taken into consideration and not just do everything for only COVID. Of course, right now the focus is on COVID. We better do it but it is also important for us to look at uh, an overall change in our new lifestyle, wherein we become more hygienic, we become more organized, and at the same time, make sure that an integrated approach, which is the key to success in today's world, is the hallmark of the system. With these words, I would like to close my talk but open up again for discussion with a take home sentence because you might uh, you might forget all my talk for the last 35 minutes. But if you remember this one sentence. The power of wellness is profound strength of personalized nutritionals. Nutraceuticals and herbals and the right combination of exercises and mental health and the concept of sustaining good health comes from within more than from outside. 
but it is very important for us to ensure that we are one with nature, with Prakriti, as much as we are not away from it. That's very important. And that's where today we can understand these things from a scientific approach, from a scientific data at a molecular level, and from a food and processing angle, where the processing doesn't destroy the nutritional, and based on all that, a new change lifestyle approach for a healthy and wellness that is going to be your birthright to live. And therefore, let us not sacrifice that by being not careful. And with that, uh, stay safe, stay fit, and stay healthy as you combat this pandemic. And have a positive mind that your body, if you treat it well, it will take care of this war. If you don't treat it well, it will say, sir or madam, I have difficulty. So therefore, it's our job to protect the body and give what it wants so that not only we are healthy, but the community is healthy. And when the community is healthy, the nation is healthy. When the nation is healthy, the whole world is healthy. And I look forward with a high degree of optimism that we all can contribute in this time to a wonderful world full of health and wellness. Thank you very much. And Namaskar. So it's uh, thank you very thank much you very for much your wonderful and uh, uh, always, always that uh, the body will succumb to the mind and mind to the spirit and uh, with your wise sentences about how we have to integrate tradition with the modern science. It will be a very, very good example for all of us to somehow learn lessons from this pandemic and also how these infectious diseases can be tackled. And uh, I would like to really thank you very much for this. And then I hope that our people will be able to lead this session of questions. Ilika, you are there online? Yes, sir, I'm here. Uh, you have to take control. Probably you are so much mesmerized with the talk. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you, Shatri, for that, Dr. Shatri, for that uh, very good summarizing effect. That is icing on the cake. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Sir, uh, we cannot agree more with you, sir, that uh, through your lecture, how, you know, food is so important. Uh, not only to provide nourishment in our body, but also with its nutrition and therapeutic values, how it can play such a big role in enhancing our immune system. So thank you once again, sir. And I think our take home message will be that, you know, to maintain a healthy lifestyle, which include uh, a healthy diet, exercise and a proper sleep. Thank you once again, sir. So uh, with your permission, can we now go to the Q&A session, sir? Yeah, yeah please. I'm more interested okay, in that sir. than my talk. <laughs> okay, sir. Sir, we have a separate team who has been collecting all the questions uh, received on Facebook, YouTube, and MS Teams during your talk. So, and uh, this will be conducted by uh, Ms. Monty Gogoi. So, I request Ms. Monty to kindly take over. And we have uh, only selected the most relevant questions. Uh, we have received so many comments uh, appreciating your talk so many questions and which you know clearly said that the students they were very much involved and they were enjoying your lecture but we are going to take up just a selective uh, six or seven questions thank you sir miss monty please take over thank you so much sir for your thank informative you. lecture so the first question we have it from gurunath k can we prevent COVID-19 by eating any immuno-boosting vegetables or food? Uh, I have one suggestion. Uh, I will answer this question, but during that time, you can group the questions, similar question, and make it one large question. If you can group it, that is better. Otherwise, uh, many people may miss the chance. So there should be somebody in the background to group the question and, and tell me, then I can answer all of them together. Uh, yeah, this is a very specific uh, question. Yeah, 
So this is a very specific question, uh, but it is, it's very important. Uh, it's not only COVID we are talking. There is nothing like eat one and leave the other. Because as you know, the immune system is a huge cascade of information that is flowing and the hundreds and thousands of molecules and the body is almost a million molecule plus floating around. So sometimes just eating one uh, doesn't solve the problem. It may change a system in a very different way, but it also has to be kept in mind. It is an integrated approach. Uh, the food is not drug, for, you know, uh, but you can use food as your medicine, as Hippocrates said, provided you have an integration of food. You require all. As I mentioned, one mineral less like zinc in your system can completely throw your immune system to a different level. So therefore, how do I, I compromise other nutrition if I take only one? So there is nothing like a single vegetable or a single, but I would like to hear uh, like the tradition of Northeast, uh, because this is coordinated from Northeast. Northeast has a season where you have to eat 100 vegetables in a short time. Am I right? So fantastic tradition. Why 100? Because you require all of it. So I think that is tradition. That is wisdom. So you don't say only eat Bujalakia. You will say eat all the 100. And in that small period, and that is a period of uh, high infection like summer and therefore you're protecting your body by giving it all. So that will be my answer. But there is a lot more to talk on that. It requires another seminar. But please remember a holistic approach is more important and uh, you have to standardize to your personal body. Uh, some people when they take turmeric, they feel very heated up and they cannot uh, they cannot sit quiet. They feel feverish, but some people don't. So you take less amount of turmeric then so, so on and so you have to really standardize, optimize and do it. Thank you very much for that wonderful question. It opens up new vistas and uh, hats off to the northeast of India culture of eating 100 vegetables in a couple of months. Wonderful as a system. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Manvi. She says India is half to many nutrition and immunity boosting food products, but in the present scenario, adulteration is a major problem. How to tackle such an issue, sir? I, I could not hear. There was some break in the voice. You sir, can be slower. Or... Sir, India is a hub to many nutrition and immunity boosting food products. But the, in the present scenario, adulteration is a major problem. So, sir, how to tackle such an issue? So, adulteration, sir. Most of the uh, foods we are talking about are fresh. And uh, uh, you may have certain amount of pesticides sprayed on something, but when you look at most of the fresh fruits and vegetables, and uh, for example, rice, different form of rice, like black rice of Northeast and so on. Rice uh, does not have too much pesticide because it is broken from the uh, paddy. And uh, so similarly wheat also, because we are talking about 105 million tons. To protect 105 million tons, you require another 200 million tons of pesticide we don't manufacture, right? So it is always stored properly. So I think if you really choose your uh, vegetables and fruits, wherein you can uh, bring home and wash it clean. So it is not the adult trends that we are talking in fresh food. So your first choice is fresh food, number one. Second, uh, when it is processed food, like Moringa powder, for example, is supposed to boost immunity and also rich in beta carotene and vitamin, uh, you know, uh, to a certain extent, vitamin A because beta carotene and also iron. You probably cannot grow Moringa tree in your house. So you go for a Moringa powder from the market. So best is to look at the regulatory stamp on it and so that you buy from an authentic manufacturer who has certain amount of regulatory stipulation and who has a concern for the public. And therefore, you can't buy from some source which you don't know. So, so therefore, uh, in journals, it can be open source. In processed food, it has to be closed source of packed food, which have got a quality stamp on it. 
to a large extent you can minimize. But at the same time, I would like to also emphasize when you wash your vessels, when you wash your hand, how much soap is remaining in it is a much bigger question than the adulteration of food. Maybe you are taking lots and lots of detergents into the body. So make sure that you also address that as that's why I said farm to folk, F-O-L-K. And uh, everything has to be properly. That doesn't mean we become paranoid. Yeah. So we should be uh, quite OK. But chemicals is the one the body cannot handle. Body can handle some organisms, but chemicals will have difficulty. So minimize that. Be careful. And uh, of course, now everybody is in the habit of eating at home, not in the restaurants. So that's another big, big change of lifestyle that has happened. But uh, that's OK. It will all become normal, hopefully. And uh, as much as possible, eat hot food and uh, don't go into a food that you suspect may be containing pesticide, herbicide or something. If you have other information, avoid it. What does it matter? Miss one or two foods, you're OK. You're OK. So so that's the, that's where you missed your friends for three months, four months, right? Meeting them personally. It's OK. You'll be all right. Thank you. The next question is from Kirthanan. Why there is a gap in the modern medicines and the traditional therapies? Uh, the principles of modern medicine uh, is no way different from the traditional therapies. After all, you identify a molecule. Turmeric is good for health in the traditional system of medicine. It is not necessary that it is for all diseases, but to boost up immunity. But then the modern medicine would work on the molecule of turmeric called curcumin, which is one of the primary molecule. And they would isolate it and make capsules of turmeric, which is given at about 300 or 400 milligrams. And then you take it, then you say, I took the extract of turmeric, I should be healthy now. So the modern approach is singular molecule, taking it out, understanding it. That's good. We take out an active molecule from the traditional medicine and understand the mechanism of it in the body. But then in critical cases, we might have to give that individual molecule. But in the normal way, if turmeric is used in food, it's the most sustainable way. The reason is food will liberate the molecules very slowly in the body. When you take a tablet, it will release immediately within a one and a half hour or two hours and it's loaded on to your liver and it is excreted quickly. On the other hand, a food based turmeric and will stay in the gut. Some of the researchers have shown almost in the gut, both both in the intestine and the small and large intestine, almost for a week it is pasted on the intestine, protecting the body in terms of many infections and boosting the immunity by giving a small dose of turmeric, which is curcumin and curcuminoids that are present there. So it is an integrated approach that matters. But I would certainly say modern medicine tries to help us using modern scientific tools to understand the mechanism. But that doesn't mean everything that we are eating must be proved by modern, modern science. Then we can't eat. Till the final word is said about rice, it is safe for you, you can't eat rice. Can you do that? No. I think the epidemiology has shown us that some things are safe and go ahead. But if you take anything in large excess quantity, you can't take 10 grams of turmeric a day. You will be immediately hospitalized within a week because you have toxicity on that. So just it is all mita in Sanskrit. That means limit. Everything is moderation, right? OK, I want to do exercise. I will run for 15 kilometers today. I've never run in my life. You will be in ICU within no time. So please have the mita in Sanskrit word, which is moderation, everything in moderation. And that's good. That's why we require a combination in India. India is very lucky. We have fantastic modern scientists who are world class. And we have fantastic 5000 years of tradition. Can you believe? Can you believe this combination? So we are so lucky. 
And I'm sure out of the people who are hearing us, some of them are going to be Nobel laureates. I'm, I am very confident. When you get Nobel Prize, please remember us that we talked about it today. Yeah. So bright India, full of confidence, full of modern scientists who know things from quantum physics all the way to basic biology and 5,000 years of tradition with 12,000 traditional foods all around the world. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. What a treasure we are sitting on. So I think one life is not enough to work. It requires several lives. So that that would be my answer for that question in a little bit more generic way. But in particular, it's a good question. I like it. Thank you. So next question. I'm missing you. It is cut. I'm not able to hear you. Actually, you know, the power is uh, not uh, going okay. and then there is a problem. Hey, Lisa and Monty, can you come here? Hello. So they are ending. That gives a small break for people yeah. to breathe. So that should be okay. No, there's a heavy rain here. Oh, and then rain is important. Rain is important. Hello, sir. Ah, hello. I, I missed sir. your when you started speaking. We missed you. Okay, please repeat. Okay, sir. So this is the last question. It's from Anurana. She, she is asking if you think genetically modified foods can be a new power booster for immunity. Is that possible, sir? I I am a scientist. I will go by data. What is genetically modified food? The same food that you are growing, but which becomes resistant to pests, which becomes resistant to some of the viral attack of the plant, which also becomes resistant to certain nematodes and so on. OK, so it doesn't change the total composition of food. But rather, there are some which boost up lysine, for example, lysine rich food. There are some which are on beta carotene and so on. So therefore, it is not necessarily that we would say GM foods will boost immunity. Not necessarily at all. It's one of the foods if it is approved by the government for that country. It all depends upon which country you are living in. So therefore, it is food that increases the immunity if taken in the right quantity and the right food rather than any particular food. Like if I say hybrid varieties will boost immunity, I'll be wrong because hybrid variety actually increases the yield and per hectare and so on. So but the basic composition remains the same. There is no new component that is introduced and that will be that. But you can always do this. You can take a normal rice, non-GM rice, and non-GM uh, wheat, and add all your vegetables, and make all your spices added to it, and make a curry. It can beat any food in the world, right? Everybody does it all around the world. Be it be Mediterranean food, be it be Thai food, be it be Indian food, be it be a Spanish food, or be any of those traditional countries which have a lot of wisdom. So what you do is take a base like wheat or rice and uh, make that as a base and circulate the other ingredients around it every day. And that's how you build a combination of foods. And that is what traditional foods is all about. People have tried for more than 4,000 years and they have distilled. If today you are eating a curry, it has got a stamp on it of 3,000 years. 3000 years. So therefore, what you have got it is a distilled knowledge. You can improve it further. You can improve it further for your own family, for yourself. You can share with your friends. Yeah. So it is up to you, but don't leave the base. If you leave the base, but today we are also changing our food habits through millets, legumes, etc., which were forgotten at some point of time. We missed it. Today we need to include it. So it is very important that is a holistic approach, not just wheat and rice, but we have legumes, pulses, millets. And for some reason, 
during the imperial rule, these were labeled as horse gram, pigeon pea, cow pea, etc., which makes my grandchildren not eat it. You are giving me horse gram, sorry about it, I can't eat. So you have to call them as nutri grains. So we need to really make a difference in bringing back that lost culture, the lost kingdom of nutri grains and make it holistic. That is more important than looking at any one single angle, you know, and uh, today it's very rich and India grows all of it. And thanks to Professor M.S. Swaminathan, the, the real father of Indian Green Revolution. He made us self-sufficiency in food. And we also had rainbow revolution of horticulture. Every corner has some fruits being sold, right? Amazing. And, and therefore, and we are number one in many things. We are number one in milk. We are number one in eggs. And to top it all, we are number one in Bujalakia, the hottest chili in the world. <laughs> so we are number one in many things, but we have no time to enjoy that news. We always look at something else and try to imbibe it. So I think it's very important. We dig in ourselves and see how much we can use, how much we have tradition, how much we have wisdom, how much we have experience. And if I may be wrong if I say this, enter the kitchen. Even though you are better off may not allow you, but enter the kitchen, dabble with the food a little bit. And uh, it's a very worthy exercise. You can create your own nutritious food, your own immune foods, your own system. And so wonderful is the traditional wisdom, but it has to be also supported by modern science. Without modern science, it will be very difficult to understand what is happening. OK, so today we know the structure of COVID-19, correct? Very well. Otherwise, we can't make a system which can attack it. We are working on protease to attack that, to, to inhibit it. So, how are, you know, everything is fundamental research. So we use fundamental research to understand, but then we use the results of it for the health of the society. And therefore, we should look at holistically. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. for your nice and informative answers. So we are handing over, over to you, Elika, ma'am. She'll be giving the concluding remarks. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Wonderful to both of you for having kind of clustered all the questions and, uh, you know, trying to put it in a very simple way so that I can answer. Thank you. Wonderful. It was an honor. Wonderful. Once again, sir, with a deep sense of gratitude, I, on behalf of my director, the SRTP team, and on behalf of all the participants, I thank you once again for sparing your valuable time, sir, and for blessing us this morning with your lecture and such an active interaction uh, through all the questions. Thank you once again, sir. And we cannot agree again, sir, with you more that, you know, we have to take the wisdom from our traditional food system and combine it with the modern science and come up with a holistic approach to tackle the current uh, crisis that we are facing. Thank you so much once again, sir. So Thank with you your permission much. now. Yeah, please. With your permission, we would like to now conclude uh, today's session. So I thank you again, and I thank all the participants who are with us. I thank all thank the you. participants and the faculty and the director of NIAST and uh, Director General CSIR for this wonderful innovative program. And I'm, I'm deeply thrilled and I look forward for more such programs in future. And I congratulate all of you for this extraordinary arrangement to bringing in together people. And I, I have the one of the luckiest one to address so many people in one go. And I think it's great. It's great to yes. thank you very much. And uh, please stay safe, stay fit and stay healthy. And yes. uh, be confident that COVID-19 can be handled and let us expect a quick vaccine. At the same time, build our immunity with the knowledge yes. of food until it comes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Thank you.